Hi friends, welcome on board for another project. This time I decided to design this compact and easy to build DC to DC boost converter. Actually I had not published a boost converter for a long time, so now is the time. It gets 5 volts at the input, this USB type C connector, and delivers 12 volts at the output. And 12 is a common voltage for many applications. And you can adjust the output voltage and put it precisely on 12 using this potentiometer. You can uh, connect the input to your mobile charger, for example, this USB Type C cable. And if you have a power bank, because the output voltage of the power banks is 5 volts, then you will have a portable 12 volts power source as well. And this is a major application for this circuit board, a 12 volts power bank. Let me explain the circuit. So here is the input. This LED shows the uh, input voltage connection and this capacitor is the input capacitor to stabilize the regulator. This fat component is the uh, switching regulator, boost converter, and using this inductor and this Schottky diode build a boost converter circuit. These two capacitors for output noise reduction, as well as this one. This is a one microfarad capacitor for high frequency noise reduction. And as I said, this is the output terminal. As you can see, the copper area is big. So you would need, or it is easier that you solder these three components using a hot air station. And it is a good practice also for your SMD soldering because uh, it is difficult to solder these components, these three ones especially, using a normal soldering iron. It is easy using a hardware station. Even for this USB Type-C connector, it is somehow difficult using a normal uh, soldering iron. The back side of the PCB, a solid ground plane to reduce the noise and to reduce the uh, impedance of the ground pass. The result is more stability for the circuit and better performance. So let's go to the next step for the schematic and PCB. All right, this is the home page of Altium Designer, schematic diagram. This one is the PCB layout. I have uploaded this PCB project in my Altium 365 cloud space, and you can download this project for free from my space. However, there is an opportunity if you follow this link in my YouTube video description, it allows you to download the latest version of the Altium, as of today is 24.6.1, and activate it with a free legal license. Then you will see your name here. You can create your own Altium 365 cloud space, the same as me. And you can test all of the features of this software. If you liked it, upgrade your license. If you didn't like it, this software, at least, it gives you an access to download my projects for free. And as I said, you don't need to upgrade your license to download these projects. Here is the schematic. Uh, so this one is the USB Type-C connector. And I have pulled down the CC1 and CC2 pins to ground using R2 and R3 resistors to indicate that this connector is the on the load side and the, and the current is high, higher than 500 milliamps. So these two pull down resistors are quite mandatory. You must put these two resistors. Uh, the next point is that the shield, I believe the shield uh, should not be connected to the ground in the USB connector. However, some people argue that a USB Type-C is different, so it means in the USB Type-C connector, the shield should be connected to the ground. What I did here, if this is the PCB, as you can see, I have connected the shield to the ground. However, I personally don't believe that the USB Type-C is different. The shield should not be connected to the ground for EMI purposes. So let me know in the comment section, let me know what you think. If you believe USB Type-C is different, the shield should be connected or not connected. I have connected in this project because I don't believe it affects the operation that much. 
Ah, it's okay. It doesn't matter. Anyway, uh, so here is the input, and the V bus comes to the input of the regulator, and this capacitor stabilizes the regulator. The regulator chip, the boost converter, is XL6019. is a famous chip. The inductor is uh, 47 microhenry, and this is the Schottky diode. These two resistors belong to the feedback circuit. Uh, to prepare a voltage for the feedback pin and stabilize the output voltage uh, based on these two resistor and I, resistors and I have put this potentiometer to adjust the output voltage a little because uh, we are not sure about the tolerance of these two resistors so, they, so this potentiometer adjusts the output voltage exactly on 12 volts. These three resistors are for noise reduction at the output. And this is the output terminal to get the 12 volts voltage. And this LED uh, indicates that the input voltage is connected. And the input voltage is 5, the output is 12. Let's go to the PCB. So this is a two layer PCB board. Red is top and blue is the bottom layer. Let me check the board size. It says the horizontal size is around five and a half centimeters and vertical size is around three centimeters. As I mentioned, please let me know in the comment section if you think the shield of the USB Type-C connector should be connected to the ground or it should not. I think it doesn't matter if this is a USB Type-C connector or other type of the USB connector. The shield should not be connected to the ground, but some people are disagree, are not agree with me that and, and say USB type C is different. So let me know. For this circuit, I connected this. I connected the shield to the ground. It doesn't matter that much here. Let me enable the single layer mode. As you see, I have implemented the high current PCB nets using copper planes, not using PCB tracks. A single PCB, PCB track here is for the feedback resistors from the output. So all of the high current PCB nets or high current areas or high current uh, connections have been implemented using copper planes like this. The second point is the bottom layer. The bottom layer is a solid ground plane, helps to reduce the length of the ground, ground pass reduce the impedance of the ground pass, means lower output noise and better stability and performance for the circuit. Also, look at these wires or vias. I have place, placed these vias near the critical areas, I mean near the ground pin of the output capacitor, near the ground pin of the output uh, connector near the ground pin of the switching regulator, near the ground pin of the input connector, near the ground pin of the input capacitor. This also helps to reduce the impedance of the ground pass and means better uh, stability and lower noise at the output. If you, if you are connected to the Altium 365 and make any changes to this PCB and place the share it says choose the workspace in which to make the project available. So I, I uh, select my space and it says the project is updated with changes made by team members, commenting and editing available based on your, on your preferences. It means any changes you make on this PCB and your own PCB and whatever PCB and place the share, all of it all of the team members that are connected to the Altium 365 will get that update instantly and automatically. This is very important. Don't forget to check this feature when you get that uh, legal license, okay? Anyway, let's go to the next section and test the board. All right, I have prepared this test setup using a DC load oscilloscope for output noise checking and Vevor thermal imaging camera for checking the uh, temperature of the components. And the model is SC240M. 
if I could show you, here is the board. Uh, I will put an image for you because it's difficult to show you like this. It's a very handy device to check the thermal stress of the component. Now the output current is around 700 milliamps. Uh, my mobile charger cannot deliver more than this uh, at the input because this is not the input current, it's the output current and the current at the input is higher than this. To show you the output uh, stability and output voltage fluctuation, if I turn off, you will see uh, the output voltage without any load. So at the moment it's 11.9.85 or 9 or something. So if I turn it off, you see the voltage difference between the 700 milliamp load and no load is just around 10 or 15 milliamps. So the stability of the output voltage is pretty high. So at the DC load, something like this is a very handy device or I can say, I can say is a must to have a tool for testing all kind of power supplies. So now I change the focus of the camera to the oscilloscope to show you the output noise. So this is the oscilloscope screen. The probe should be something like this, a ground spring on the tip, and it's better that you put the probe on times one. And if you see the oscilloscope screen, the probe has been set on times one as well. So let me put the probe on the output. And here is the output noise with the minimum capacitors at the output because my intention was to design a compact board. So it says RMS noise is around 60 millivolts and peak to peak noise is around 180 millivolts. If you want lower noise at the output, just add some capacitors just next to your load, as close as possible to your load. Okay? So. I hope you like this project. You can download the PCB project and PCB files from the Altium 365. We will do something else in the next video.